Hello, everyone. In this video, we will give a guide and tips for chapter 22 of my Java book. Chapter 22 is on developing efficient algorithms. First, we're going to introduce a measurement, the big O notation to measure the efficiency of algorithm. So this is the uh, section um, measuring algorithm efficiency using big O notation. Using big O notation, we conduct a theoretic analysis on the imprecise of the uh, program. So um, algorithm analysis is for dealing with large amount of data. If you have very small amount of data, your program um, doesn't spend much time. So there's no really significance to uh, do, perform algorithm analysis. And so we assume that our input size is very large and we have a lot of data and we uh, analyze the, uh, the uh, complexity um, in relation to the size of the input. So we measure algorithm efficiency is on the theoretical term. It is not actually to run the code and all just the wrong and a couple of the samples. So we look at this, um, the um, analysis on the input size, performing a theoretic analysis and to see what happens when your input size increases like doubles and quadruples. So what happens to the time complexity of your program? So that's called a growth rate. So when your input size grows and how uh, much the time grows, that's what we focus on and using the big old notation. So please read this section and on this big old notation. So that's the basis and for algorithm analysis. So, and then the next section, we have examples to determine big old notation and for a couple of examples, and we're gonna get used to this big old notation. And further in this section, we're gonna analyze algorithm time and complexity. For the algorithm, we already know uh, the binary search, selection sort, how of Honoi problem, and we see what is the time complexity using the big O notation. And then we get into the uh, design algorithms, and we're gonna see the uh, Fibonacci number problem we had uh, in chapter 18, we uh, developed the using recursion and see the uh, time complexity is exponential time. So, and then we redesign the algorithm and using dynamic programming approach to get a linear time complexity. So that's a, that's a, a dramatic difference. Um, so, and, between those two approaches. So design the algorithm and using a variety of techniques. So this is a technique we use the dynamic programming. Well, the next is a very well-known problem. It's Euclid's problem. And we, um, we have the uh, brute force approach and, and we try to tweak it and to improve it. And so and still the best you can do it. So it's a linear time. Um, but if you use Euclid's algorithm and you can get a very fast result, it's out of log in time. So it's a logarithm, it's very fast. And the next section is on the prime numbers. So there's many creative way to find prime numbers, large prime numbers. So we, explore all this, discuss different approaches. And in this section 
for binding prime numbers. And prime numbers and, uh, have a lot of applications. And this section is to find the closed pair of points using divide and conquer approach. In chapter eight, we already presented the uh, algorithm for finding both the pair. You have many points to find the two, they're close to each other. And we use an intuitive approach and the time complexity is all of n square. And this time we use divide and conquer approach and we reduce the time to order of n log n. So this is the section here on finding the closest pair of points using divide and conquer. And the next section is on the uh, uh, eight Quinn's problem. It is a very well-known problem. At Quinn's problem, we solve the problem using backtracking. So in this chapter, we present several well-known techniques in algorithm design to design efficient algorithms. The next <clears throat> section is on a geometric uh, algorithm problem. We look at this problem for finding a convex hole. So we look at uh, the different approaches. So first is the, uh, we use the, uh, um, the gift wrapping algorithm. We present the gift wrapping algorithm and analyze the time complexity. It's all of n square time. And further, we look at a different approach that's Graham's algorithm and this reduce the time complexity to order of n log n time. In the uh, program exercise, and you're going to actually implement the algorithm. So here we just present the algorithm and the ideas for the algorithm and later you implement it. <clears throat> the uh, final part of this uh, chapter is on uh, stream matching. Stream matching is, is very well studied. So you have a text and you have a pattern, you want to see a pattern in the text. So that's called a stream matching. And so we have a brute force algorithm in which takes all of n square time. And we have an improved one, and this is called uh, uh, a boil more algorithm. So that's why in the worst case, it's still order of n square time, but in practice, it is much better. It's close to a linear time. So this is the uh, boy, uh, boy more. And the next one is, uh, is no uh, Morris Pratt algorithm. So this is the best algorithm. It guarantees the time complexity in the worst case. It's order of, uh, it's a linear time, order of n plus m. So this is the n is the size of text, m is the size of the pattern. So that is all for this chapter on developing efficient algorithms. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>